Alright, hi everyone, this is P here. Now, the government just announced a new housing grant policy, alright? And it's known as the Enhanced CPF Housing Grant. So, how is it going to impact our property prices and what are my views, okay? So, let's go to the studio and I'll share with you my take on this. Let's go. Alright, so now let's take a look how would the new housing grant affect Singapore housing prices, okay? So, first thing, Quick disclaimer, these are just my personal view. Please do not rely on what I say solely to invest. All right, always do your own due diligence. Okay, so what has changed? So recently it was announced that there will be a new enhanced housing grant, okay, by the Singapore government to replace the existing additional and special CPF housing grant, okay? Part of the move is to make the whole public housing system more affordable and also to simplify the grant system, okay? Um, however, I just want to preempt you guys is that I think this may have some unintended consequences uh, which may have an opposite effect of what they wanted. Okay, let me explain further. So, firstly, let's look at what are the main changes. Okay, so the thing is that there's not going to be any more limit on the type of HDB that you can buy or the location before you qualify for a grant. All right, uh, as opposed in the past. Uh, you can only buy up to 4-room HDB and it needs to be non-mature estate, okay? So this is great. So everything goes right now. Um, they have also increased, alright, the income limit for you to qualify for the grant. In the past, it was 8,500 and now it's up to 9,000, okay? So 500 more. So that means more people will qualify for the grant. Um, the subsidies is also ranging from 5,000 to 80,000, whereas in the past, it was only up to 40,000. And the new requirement now is that the flat lease, which is, uh, which is the remaining lease of the house, including your age plus your age, needs to be at least 95, okay? Uh, this to make sure that you know, the house can last you to your old age, okay? And otherwise, your subsidies will be prorated accordingly. So, while we realistic, uh, idealistically, we can get 80k, but realistically, how much more grant can we get, all right? And that really depends on your income okay so let's take a quick look at the chart so this is from the government website um, basically if your household income is less than $1,500 you're getting an 80k grant okay that's the maximum however at the low end if your household income is ranging between $8,500 to about $9,000 you're getting about $5,000 in grant okay so I think realistically most people most household may fall in the middle so you should get about 40k more, okay? For most people, you should get about 40k more in grant. So, understanding that most people will get 40k more, how does this uh, in affect the Singapore housing prices? How does it affect it, okay? So, firstly, this is definitely going to happen, is that more people will apply for BTO, all right, the new flats, since it will be more affordable. Um, however, the unintended consequences or the side effect is that we will expect to see the resale HDB prices increase as well. Now, why is that so? Because unlike the BTO prices, which is set by the government, okay, the resale HDB prices is actually a free market system. All right? It's open to buyers and sellers, supply and demand. So if most people have more cash now in their hands in the form of a grant, what you will see is that they can beat up the prices, causing the resale HDB prices to increase. Okay, and right now Singapore HDB prices is already quite high, and um, with this grant, I think what we will see is we ex we will see it going up a little bit further. Okay, so why is that? Because most people will qualify for more grant than before, and they can afford to pay a higher prices now for a same property. Okay. Right, so what are the side effects? The side effects are very simple. Firstly, you will see that the middle to high income group being sidelined a little bit um, because they will not be given any grant at all, uh, but they will experience the impact of uh, increasing resale HDB prices. Okay, so that's one thing that they, they will experience. And in, that, in addition, uh, more people now will qualify for BTO as well because the government has also increased the income ceiling for BTO. Uh, that would mean that more people are able to buy BTO and HDB 
uh, however, there's a larger group okay, that cannot qualify for any grant. So I, I think there will be some people who are a bit unhappy about this. Um, next side effect, okay, this is my personal view. I believe higher resale HDB prices will lead to higher private property prices. Why is that so? Um, two main reasons. Firstly, our HDB is built very closely to private property and therefore there is a very sharp comparison. Um, in normal circumstances, private property comparing to HDB, if they are the same location, same size, same facing, everything else equal, private property will command a higher premium simply because it's private property. Okay? And, and if the HDB prices were to increase, you will see a similar increase in the property, private property prices as well. Okay? Uh, secondly, is actually something to do with basically math. Okay? So if you look at this chart, which I took from the Singapore government website, okay, the blue line is the price of the private property that's non-landed. Okay, so I've taken away the landed property. And the orange line is the resale HDB prices. Okay, and these two are put into an index. And you can see that they pretty much follow each other. Okay, uh, they are not exactly 100% fit, but it is very, very close. Uh, in fact, if you were to remove the title and show this to any scientists, they will tell you that, hey, these two, uh, these two items probably have a very strong correlation. Okay? And this is my second reason why I think the private property prices is likely going to increase should the resale HDB prices increase. Okay? Now, the next side effect is that with the overall property prices going up, I personally believe that the future BTO prices will likely increase, okay? Uh, not just due to simple inflation, but it's because the resale HDB prices and the BTO prices, while there's a difference, okay, and BTO prices tends to be cheaper, they can't be too far apart, okay? They can't be too far apart because if it's too far apart, what's going to happen? Nobody wants to buy resale HDB, right? Because, if, for example, if a BTO and a resale HDB, the price difference is like 50%, all right, half the price, everyone's going to buy BTO, okay? Uh, when the price is cheap enough, uh, location may not matter, all right? Facing may not matter because it's so cheap. So unless the government is willing to sell the BTO prices at a huge discount to the resale prices, likely BTO prices will also follow in tandem with the overall property prices, okay? This is to make sure that uh, it's not too far difference uh, because if BTO is too cheap, what will happen is nobody wants to buy resale and this will cause the resale market to collapse as well, okay? So I think overall, these are all good news for sellers and existing owner. If you already own a house or think, thinking of selling your house, fantastic news. I, I think you can wait a bit more, wait for the prices to increase a little bit further. However, it's not so good, all right, uh, for people who are looking to buy their first house in the future, okay? Because we're likely to see the housing prices increase across the board, starting with the resale, all right, that is directly affected. And then with the resale going up, you will see the private property going up. And then eventually, the BTO prices will go up as well, okay? So, what would I do in this situation? So, if, if I were in the shoe of someone who has not bought a property, Firstly, if I would like to buy a BTO, I would, I would go and buy as soon as possible because the BTO prices is sort of fixed by the government. Uh, it is not so sensitive to the market forces. So with the extra grant, indeed your BTO is going to be cheaper. Okay, so make full use of it. Um, however, if BTO is not an option for you for some reason, if you're going to buy a private property, you can do that because private, private property prices uh, will not rise so fast, okay? Like I said, the first one to be impacted is likely to be the resale market because this grant does not apply to uh, buyers who are buying private property, okay? And thirdly, I would avoid resale uh, if I can because likely resale prices are going to increase really quickly and as of now, the prices are already at a premium. We are already seeing HDB uh, flat selling for a million or more than a million in some places in Singapore, which is quite high, okay? So, 
the thing is to keep up with all this increase in in prices all right increase in property prices and housing prices what we need to do other than just uh, looking at the prices go up is that we need to find other ways to build wealth all right and it's to build wealth faster than the prices can increase all right to beat inflation beat the price increases so i just want to share very quickly three ways that i personally do it uh, firstly is if you are working what you can potentially do especially if you're in the private sector you can actually ask for a pay rise okay you never know all right i have a friend who has been working in the private sector for a long time and and he felt that he was no, not getting the, the, the highest pay he can for his, for his job. And I just told him, why don't you find a good chance where your boss is around and it's a chill setting, nothing is at stake on the table, maybe it's going to be holiday soon. Just pop the question, all right? Just ask for a simple pay rise. Uh, he was a bit hesitant at first. He, he said, you know, I don't know how th- my boss will see me. Will he think that I'm, I'm uh, go, just going after money and will, will he fire me because of this and, and that? And I said, dude, you know, you never know unless you try. So he did try eventually and lo and behold, he got a pay rise. Okay, so that's one of the fastest way you can actually build your wealth in a much shorter term, all right, is to really ask for a pay rise if you feel that you are highly skilled and yet you're underpaid at your job, okay? Second thing is you can also start a side hustle. So for those of you who are not aware, what is a side hustle? A side hustle is actually like a hobby, but a hobby that generates you income. Um, for example, I, I know a mom who actually sells uh, things online uh, to get a side income. All right? I've also known a, a, a housewife who actually teaches tuition to students uh, when she's free to get a side income. Okay? So there are many ways you can, you can uh, actually get a side income through a side hustle, all right? We call it a hustle because you really need to work for it because it's like an additional job that you need to do. But it's a very good way because uh, you never know whether this side hustle will work out and should it work out, it can actually replace your primary job, all right? Thirdly, and that's something that I'm personally uh, like the most, is to actually look at investments. Um, Because when you're investing, you are actually tapping on the expertise and the knowledge of those people in the companies they are invested in, okay? They are the one running the business, generating profit for you, dividends for you, okay? And a lot of times, the homework on analyzing an investment is done at the upfront, okay? And once that's done, all you need to do is to let the company do its job, okay? Let the company go and sell the goods, all right, make profit, and then they'll pay you dividend, and you are receiving all this money without lifting a finger after you've done the investment, okay? So this is really one of the best way I personally feel to build very long-term wealth, okay? I just want to show this very quick and uh, interesting chart, all right? So for those of you who are not aware, uh, in the investment world, this is the most important chart, okay? And this is the US S&P 500. So these are the top 500 companies put together in the US and to form a price chart for you. And I just want you to take notice that, you know, even going through two economic crises uh, in 2000 and then in 2008, once more, if you just invested in the US market um, uh, since 1994 to today and you've done nothing, um, you have done zilch, you have not done any homework <laughs> like, like me, you will have gotten a 60 Oh, sorry, my bad. It's 600% return. Not 600 times, uh, sorry. 600% return since 1994. Okay, 600% return. That's fantastic, you know. That's really fantastic for not doing anything, isn't it? Okay, so that's why to me, I still find investment as one of the most uh, plausible way for most people to have extra income. So... More information, if you like to, go to my Facebook group. All right, you can scan this QR code that will bring you uh, there right now. So right now, I'll pass it back. All right, so I hope you guys have learned a lot from the session and help you make better investment decisions. But more importantly is this, when you purchase a property, make sure it's well within your means, okay? If you're going to use it for investment, all right, also make sure that you're getting into the correct types of property. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!